A really big news story obviously has to deal with chemical weapons in Syria and by the time you watch this video Obama has probably already launched punitive military intervention in the country but is that the right way to go? ABC News has more. The images the evidence gathered in the attack have prompted this morning the U.S. Secretary of State to issue the strongest statement to date. John Kerry saying the U.S. has very little doubt that a chemical weapon was used by the Syrian regime last week, killing hundreds or as many as a thousand Syrian civilians. In the region this morning, possible options for a response are being discussed. U.S. Navy destroyers and submarines are now positioned in the Mediterranean Sea, armed with cruise missiles, ready to carry out strikes inside Syria if the president orders them. Now, cruise missile strikes are uh, one way that the Obama administration wants to react to the situation in Syria. I uh, disagree with that, and I'm very curious to see what the panel thinks. Uh, Marcy, I want to start off with you. I mean, is the United States genuinely concerned about the chemical, wep uh, qu chemical weapons used in Syria, or is there something else at play here? Well, one has to wonder, right? Because certainly we sold, we had no problem selling a lot of chemical weapons to Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't see any calls on the part of our Secretary of State, John Kerry, on the part of our President, uh, for a prosecution of, of the criminals in, in, in a legal sense. Uh, we don't hear any calls for the United States to join the International Criminal Court and, and prosecute, put these uh, war criminals on trial. So we have to wonder, what is all of this about? Are we, are we still subscribing to the doctrine under the Bush administration that we really want to build, uh, expand our empire uh, way beyond what we had initially planned into the Middle East. Uh, is it about oil? What's it about? You know, because certainly we are not under direct threat, and there are other opportunities to address this problem. Uh, most importantly, through diplomacy, we just canceled. Our government just canceled a planned peace talk with Russia. Yep. Uh, right. So uh, we know we're not pursuing any legal avenues. And in the United Nations Security Council, all we're talking about is, is trying to get others on board, uh, not on board for possibly launching cruise missile, missile attacks if we haven't already. Uh, so I, I think that it's very suspect to answer your question. It definitely is suspect and what I also find suspect is you know campaign Obama was very much against uni unilateral action. He believed that you have to advise with Congress. Um, in this case it's important to also advise with the UN but it seems like Obama is ready to take some sort of action without having to deal with Congress and I, I see that as problematic especially when you look at polls that indicate that the U.S. Uh, population is against intervention in Syria. Mike, what are your thoughts? Uh, that's correct, actually. I mean, the latest Reuters poll showed that 9% of Americans oppose U.S. intervention, and 11% of Americans even oppose aiding the rebels and arming the rebels, as the U.S. has been doing uh, for the past couple of years. So that kind of exposes this idea of the great democracy we live in, where the decision <laughs> to go to war and launch you know, these million-dollar missiles into a country to kill people that we don't know and whose culture we don't understand um, uh, is made not by the people who are footing the bill, not by the people who will have to push the button, or, or go uh, be sent to die. Uh, it's being made by these you know, fat cats who are sitting at the top who have huge investments in these, uh, in these military industrial complex corporations, uh, generals who work in the Pentagon who are going to five uh, star steakhouse dinners with these defense contractors and wheeling and dealing and signing these contracts. Um, and these big banks and corporations who have a lot of interest in seeing an independent country like Syria, which does not follow the dictates of Wall Street and the big banks in, uh, uh, in New York and in Washington, um, uh, there's a lot of interest, financial interest in seeing that government fall. Uh, and so I think we really need to get to the, the real root cause of this. And, and your question uh, for Marcy about, what, is the US really concerned about chemical weapons? I mean, I went to Gaza in 2009 in the wake of Operation Cast Lead. Uh, I saw countless children who had their limbs melted off uh, by white phosphorus, a chemical weapon that under international law uh, is illegal to be used on civilians. The United States government did not care at all about the use of that weapon on civilians. And the greatest example of a chemical weapons attack that has a, will have a lasting effect uh, for millions of years is in Fallujah. Iraq, where the use of depleted uranium uh, was used so heavily and so disgustingly that doctors have ordered all women in Fallujah to not even have children anymore uh, because the, the amount of birth defects is so horrific and so prevalent. And so the U.S. government feigning concern over uh, the use of, of something on civilians when they themselves uh, are the biggest perpetrators and biggest funders of these kinds of atrocities. So Obama said that chemical weapons uh, 
would be his red line. And as soon as Bashar al-Assad passes that red line, he will react in some way. If he now does not react in some way, does that make him seem weak when it comes to uh, national security, which, by the way, I should note, Syria does not pose a threat to the United States at all. Um, so the, the fact that you know, anyone would fear monger and make, it, make that case is complete misinformation. Um, but you know, when it comes to the leader of the country, if he says that that is his red line and then he doesn't follow through, mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't that make him look really, really bad? Um, maybe to some people in yeah. his circles. Uh, I think for that, you know, over 90% of people who oppose intervention, uh, they will be happy with the decision not to go to war. You know, it's funny, I mean, we watched in that segment John Kerry saying there's no doubt that chemical weapons <laughs> were used in Syria. You know what his, uh, his, his evidence for that there is no doubt? You said common sense. That was his <laughs> no doubt evidence wow. that chemical weapons right. were used. I mean, it seems a little ridiculous. First of all, why would uh, Assad use chemical weapons at the very moment that UN ins uh, weapons inspectors had entered Syria to investigate chemical weapons? Kind of in interesting timing there. And at the same time, why would Assad use chemical weapons at the time uh, when they were decisively winning the war with conventional weapons? Uh, why would they give this gift to the U.S. Uh, propaganda machine? So are you denying that chemical weapons were used? I think that this is a farce. I mean, I think that they that if they were reused, they were used by the rebels as a way to uh, at, get foreign intervention. Look, the, the Assad government has no motivation whatsoever to use chemical weapons because uh, they're winning the war through conventional military means. The rebels very much have a reason to create a lot about chemical weapons because they cannot accomplish their objectives without foreign military intervention. Mm -hmm. This has been happening over the past couple years with a massive flooding in of weapons and funds by the U.S. government, uh, by their partners in the Saudi monarchy and the Qatari monarchy. Mm -hmm. um, and so this war has been kept going. It's happening because of U.S. intervention. But now we're headed towards what is uh, going to be another all-out war by the U.S. government. I think Mike makes a very good point about who actually used these weapons. We, we don't know because there has not been a U.N. investigation. And we're not calling for one. Instead, we have our government calling for a military attack. Well, it was good to see John Kerry get all pissed off and indignant like that. Did you see him? Like, he was really <laughs> yes. mad. He was like, if, you know, uh, he's upset about the indiscriminate killing, and he served in Vietnam, so if there's anybody who knows about indiscriminate <laughs> he killing, he it knows. would be John Kerry. And it was weird to see him say all that uh, Assad is, and the Syrians are using chemical weapons with no proof. It's almost like he was swift boating Assad. <laughs> it was really weird to see him do that. And uh, why can't those Syrian, only a, a depraved mind would use a chemical weapon why can't they just use good Christian depleted uranium tip bombs <laughs> like we use or how about why don't they use one of those bombs that don't kill women and children like the ones we dropped on Japan I mean all they have to do is try a little harder why don't they just Christian torture some of them in Guantanamo I mean what is wrong with these people I'm so angry at those Syrians they're so much worse than we are this is such bullshit this to see John Kerry get indignant like that I just want to throw a fucking pie in his face yeah. he is such a oh, there's, well you have to wonder what you just tortured your own goddamn man? soldier for a year and a half, John <laughs> Kerry. Where's your outrage about that? Absolutely. Is this the same man who returned from Vietnam and, and denounced <laughs> U.S. war crimes, yes. who stood with winter soldiers yes. in, their, in their testimony? Uh, or is this just a political operative? <laughs> yeah. the, the Go ahead. I, well, I just wanted to make a really quick point because right now the Obama administration is not calling for boots on the ground. They're saying that you know they'll they'll do these um, you know the the cruise missiles, and uh, it's it's like a very weird like half intervention, like strange response to it. And if you look back at you know past uh, situations where we did something similar, whether it was in Afghanistan or Iraq, it didn't work out too well for us. If anything, it caused more hostility toward the United States. Uh, these evil dictators uh, took it out on their own civilians. And also, there's no way to tell whether or not civilians are going to suffer as a result of these strikes, right? So it's not, it's so not you don't know if you're even going to target the right people or if you're going to get the right people so, in, in these efforts. So, in or, and so it's for payback on them using chemical weapons, we're going to blow some people's fucking heads off. Mm -hmm. And uh, that should even things out. Right. Well, the bleeding <laughs> is only on one side. No American lives we lost, mm -hmm. just these lives of people that, uh, mm -hmm. that we don't have to see. And so that's kind of the preferred method of warfare today. But you know, I got to say, the last time I heard something about chemical weapons and evidence of chemical weapons, uh, 5,000 of my brothers and sisters uh, uh, in uniform died, uh, and over a million Iraqis, innocent Iraqis, died. And so I think we need to look back, not 
not too far in history uh, when we're hearing these claims of chemical weapons and justification for war. We don't need to look that far back to see what was one of the greatest atrocities uh, of my lifetime. And we really have to look at the Iraq War uh, as a, an example. And one of the things that came out was the Downing Street memo, which showed that when there is an objective, and the objective here is to overthrow the government in Syria and install a puppet regime that will follow the dictates of Washington and of Wall Street. Uh, the Downing Street memo showed that the US government and its allies in the UN, they fix intelligence around the objective. So they start with the objective, overthrowing the government, and then they create this narrative around it, fixing the intelligence to what they want to accomplish. That's what's happening here. So I need to have you on a panel with Glenn Greenwald. It would be like uh, super exciting. I'm not sure I'm that caliber, <laughs> but I appreciate the compliment. <laughs>